Math 2414, volumes, volumes of solids, cross sections. Just adjusting my camera a little bit. In the previous series of videos, we developed a technique rather intuitively and easily, I might say, that allowed us to set up an integral to calculate the area between two curves, the area of a lamina that was bounded above and below by the graphs of two functions, or if we did functions of y bounded on the left and bounded on the right. In this series of videos, we're going to come up with a technique, or rather I'm just going to tell you, for finding the volumes of certain solids, if we know a few things. On the backboard here, I've got a solid drawn. It may not be that easy to see, so maybe I can do this, give it some depth. I'm not going to shave it all in. But we've got this solid, and for the sake of convenience, we've got the x-axis going right through it. So if you turn your head, it kind of looks like a bell that somebody messed up a little bit. But let's say that this solid, which begins at A on the x-axis and goes to B on the x-axis, let's say that at any point along the x-axis, which we'll call x, if we were to slice that like a guillotine or a block of cheese, and show you the surface on which we sliced it. That would be a two-dimensional surface. If we have a function that will calculate the area of that cross-section based on where we cut it, then there's a real easy way to set up an integral and calculate the volume. Without going through the Riemann sum, which would just involve cutting this into a bunch of little bitty skinny slices and setting up a sum and taking a limit. But without setting up the Riemann sum, if we know the function that calculates the area of the cross section, if we slice the solid at a certain point on the x-axis, then the volume is going to be the integral of that area function dx from a to b. So pretty simplistic. All we have to do for a given solid is come up with the function that says, tell me where to cut it, and I'll calculate the area that you see on that cross section. Once we can figure out that, then we just have to integrate it. So as you can imagine, most of these problems are going to be about the setup. And once you get it set up, then it's just an integral, which of course could rely on previous techniques like integration by parts, or trig substitution, partial fractions, or trig integrals, if you will. All right, so really the rest of these videos are just going to be showing you how to set up and evaluate these integrals. So let's see how that goes.